But no, where are we? We're twenty. I'll just retweet it. Give you guys a moment to load on into the stream. It's popping stream. What is popping? What up, everybody? What up, what up Merrick? What's up, Gumboats? <laughs> Tortle popcorn. I actually just had some skinny pop, bro. I eat the not not fat version of popcorn. What's up? I don't chow. We're just letting people load in. Probably start in like two minutes. Hi, Shady. Do you have the chat up, John? Uh, yeah, I do. We're going to be interacting with you beautiful people today. We've had a guest for the last three episodes, John, or two? Some, two or three. Something like that. Hmm. When's the last time we did a solo episode? I'm gonna actually it's a while that. ago. Yeah, it's been like we a, had... uh, three weeks, I think. Let's see. Yeah, we had Clay. We had Goderex and Asim. Oh, yeah. It was only two. We only had two episodes so Make sure you there's a while before we do one before that yeah all right uh, thank you ben for the sub all right, i think we're you got the tweet on everything yeah well we are now on episode number 29 so i appreciate you guys for your continued support it's been very fun man coming back and grinding um this officially will mark uh john has been on 15 episodes now so you know, that's more than what I did previously. So the reboot of the podcast has been successful. It's been great. We've been having a blast. Appreciate you guys showing up every uh, every single week. We've yeah, been... you loyal guys are awesome, for real. Especially, like, the people in the Twitch stream. Because I know there's a lot of people on YouTube right now, a lot of people on iTunes and Spotify. You guys should come by and check out a live version of the show. Um, I know the audio and VOD version is awesome as well that you guys have been enjoying. But the live version is just a little bit different because the chat interaction is is pretty cool, man. So stop by twitch.tv slash nameless to check it out. Wednesdays. Hey, Katie, what's up? What's up <laughs> Make sure you fill that water bottle. I got a whole brand new one. But uh, let's get into it. So obviously, John, the news um, yeah. that pretty much took over like the community for you know the last two days or so um, after the tournament, you know, everybody was all happy for Optic Gaming because you guys made, well, your former teammate, teammates, <laughs> excuse me, made a ton of progress. You guys got second place. You look great. Everybody looked good. Um, and players are starting to get better. Um, even in like search, I felt like you guys were incredible all weekend long. And uh, I really felt like you guys had, you know, a lot of strategy and it was like well thought out. Um, how did that go down? Like, did you know what was going to happen? Um, I guess just like start from ground zero for me. All right. Well, let me start with I don't. I'm not oblivious to the fact that the team wasn't performing how everyone expects a team with Slasher, Dumblet, Gunless, or sorry, Gunless, holy crap, <laughs> Slasher, Dashy, Kenny, you know, TJ to, to perform, right? Like, I, I know the team wasn't performing up to the standard that it, it should be on paper. Like, coming into the season, it should be a top two team. Intel, right? Intel. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really Intel. That's, that's, just, <laughs> that's, a, that's an obvious statement. Uh, but then go at uh going forward, like the team was struggling, and I came into a position where when I showed up to the team, the team was already struggling. Like I didn't start this season on the team. I I was like, actually preparing to be on the desk with you. Yeah. Like we used to talk. Me and Ed in private used to talk about like, oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, like world tour basically, because that's would, how it was it advertised so to us to start. Yeah. And then um, you know, stuff happened with Activision and behind the scenes stuff happened. And like it just went awry. But I joined Optic like in November ish when the game had already been out for a while, and they just were already losing maps, not enjoying playing with each other, blah blah blah. So it was a hard thing to get into to start. Well, but, the thing is, you weren't a part of the like making the roster and stuff. You just no, no, no. I, I just joined the team. I mean, I was happy to join the team. On paper, it all looks great. great. Roster, yeah. It was a great roster, and I was happy to join the team. Happy to move to Los Angeles. My family lives here. You know. Mm. So it was just like it was a it was a seemed like the right move for me at the time, and uh, so I can't be too upset about that really. But fast forward to this past weekend, uh, we get second place. But uh, I have to say I haven't talked to anyone. No one at Immortal slash Optic has talked to me, except for Mud Dog called me on the phone <laughs> to give me the news that day. But like during the weekend, no one talked to me. The week before that, no one talked to me. Even after we went 0-2, the tournament before that, no one said a word to me. 
No one has said a word to me odd, yet yeah. to this day. Uh, that's probably the thing that upsets me the most about the situation is that I was never given any type of warning. Yeah. Nothing. It's and just I like, think oh. for, for people in the chat who play devil's advocate, like uh, it's not that he's saying they have to do that. It's just like courtesy, um, especially because uh, I have a question. I actually haven't asked you this yet. Go ahead. Did they let you know that like your job was in danger at any point? No. Like, no. Uh, yeah, because I feel no. like that should be it. like, yo, um, hey, man, honestly, the team's not performing. Um, we're going to be making a change here soon uh, in the coaching position, like, unless the team has drastic change. I feel like uh, you should be given an opportunity, um, and that's usually how it's done. I, I, that's actually kind of mind-blowing if they didn't uh, let you know I'm, that that was going to happen. I mean, I guess that's how they operate because, I mean, they they release coaches in other games too. Overwatch, they release coaches. They released rallied yesterday as well. Could I ask him like, did, did he know? Uh, no, but I mean, you could just easily say the team wasn't performing up to standard, right? That's a very I feel respectable like reason. Older, older reason, at least. Like, I mean, when you get whatever. Finished, you're told why. I mean, we're in a global pandemic too. Let's let's yeah. not forget. They're so, probably downsizing. I know they've released. For a few. reason, the team isn't the best team in the world. So, I, I can just blame for that. They told you, like, no. Okay. Just like you know, the team's struggling, and we want to go in a different direction. Hmm. which is code for get the fuck out of here <laughs> well all right so <laughs> let's it's fair fine i wasn't doing enough i'm not oblivious to the fact the team wasn't in first place like i'm, I'm not that'd be ignorant so but i just wish that i was given a warning of some of some sort so um do you feel like you could have been a better coach throughout yeah of course i feel like i could have done more i feel like i could have uh been better i don't think that at the same token i don't think like these woes are like my fault. I really don't, but I do think that I could have been better. I tried like at first I was obviously I'm new to the coaching world. So I was trying to, I tried to do certain things that didn't work or I, I had a certain way of doing things that didn't work. I listened to like specifically Austin, like gave me some pointers on what things that like maybe that Crowder would do or whatever. So Austin was always like the guy that I was talking to yeah. and a slasher for you guys. And he gave me some pointers and I asked him, I'm like, He's like, yeah, you did everything that like that I wanted you to do. That like uh, the players had no idea either. None of the all oh, the players really? said, "What the hell?" No, yeah, no, they didn't consult anyone. Wow. So That's interesting. I figured it'd be like the players not liking me or whatever, but none of them said that. None of them. So this is random questions that I want to know. What tools do they provide you with to better coach? Because I know there's no place to go to learn how to be a coach. Um, it's kind of just working with the players and seeing what they want. But from an organization perspective, what did they provide you with? Uh, what tools to, to you know help better coach? Because I feel like that's how they could judge whether or not you're a good coach or not, if they didn't consult with the players. You know what I mean? Um, so like, what so, so if, like if they gave you some certain tools that you weren't using, you'd be like, okay, this guy's obviously not a coach we want, and then they release you. Or is it strictly just by tournament performance? Because that's a bit sure, weird as well. I'm sure if we weren't in a global pandemic, I probably would still be there. But that that could just be me saying that from my own egotistical standpoint. Okay. But it's not like they gave me anything to work with. Okay. They, they <laughs> I don't think they gave us anything to work with as a team in general. Hmm. Literally nothing. What do you mean? Like I, I don't. Uh, I mean they paid salaries. That that was great. Um. <laughs> Are there things that? That other, <laughs> are there things that other teams do though that you would have liked? Oh to no, see, I have no idea about other teams. I have, I'm not complaining about the way Immortals handled things like before that. Okay. I'm really not. Oh, like I just you're, you're asking me what they specifically what they did to like help me coach as from an organizational better, standpoint. I'm just trying to. I don't think that understand. they. Go ahead. I don't think they did anything. Oh, okay. I was just trying to better I never understand. Had, I never had any meetings. Really. I never had any meetings with anyone. Like not really. I might get a call or some bullshit text from mud dog or something but never <laughs> never anything that was actually worthwhile nothing helpful like yeah. only thing that only time i ever got any information from them at all is when so after the one of the homestands uh kenny couldn't kenny and jcap literally couldn't play like they were getting red boxes on their screen okay which means if you've played this modern warfare that means you're just lagging your ass off so i got like defensive for my team in the private chat i was like getting upset for them so they could play the game and have a fair chance in the match. And then afterwards that was shown to like the leaders of 
Immortals or Optic, and they got how, mad at me how for. Was that shown, though? I mean, you just copy paste it. I was typing it. Oh, okay. In like a Discord chat, and so that they got mad at me for getting upset on behalf of my teammates, on behalf of my team. That's that was the last correspondence I had with. Well, don't with, coaches on the sidelines get extremely animated and start raging? Yeah, I, that's <laughs> what I thought. I thought that's I thought that you'd want your coach to have your players back, and it was not like I did it pro- uh, publicly. I did it privately when it was just us in the league. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Oh, it must have been some pushback from whoever you're speaking with at the CDL, and then it was just uh, policy to calm you down a bit, maybe. I, I wasn't know. even like, I don't think I was. I think I mean I was upset. Don't get me wrong. Maybe if it was like a baseball game, I would have been like kicking dirt at his at his feet or something, you know? Yeah. Just like, <laughs> what are you saying? That's a horseshit call. Blah blah blah. Because well, I think it was, <laughs> but I don't think that I was out of line. I didn't say anything out of line. I didn't do anything out of line. Here's the thing. But and that's what. Is... But the point of that was to say that's the last time that. I never even talked to anyone else. I was told that they were upset. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No one talked to me. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Here's the thing about this whole situation. Last weekend, we talked, or last week, excuse me, we talked about coaches need to be held accountable, et cetera, et cetera, um, which is fine. I still believe that, you know, even now. Um, and if they were to have released you before last weekend, I think it would have been fine. But, you know, they gave you the tools, uh, you know, for an improved team. They, the, management allowed a substitute player to come in um you worked with that team in a week and you guys turned around and got second place now as soon as they exercised the right to put in a sub and you know you had you know a team that you were more confident in uh, because i talked to you all the time you talked about how j cap was underperforming individually although you still think he's a good player you were talking about how he's underperforming individually it's kind of hard to work with when there's a couple players who you know aren't getting kills so as soon as they give you the tools, you know, to make a change, have a new roster work with, you guys get second, and then they release you. That's where I have a problem with it. Like that, that doesn't bother you in any way. Because uh, that just I tells me that, that, that just tells me that they were going to do that regardless of. Yeah. I think that if you watch the match this weekend, we were one like one v two away from probably yeah. winning that. By the way, can we yeah, break that one round down real quick? Because we're gonna, we're going to go through all the matches and stuff, guys. <laughs> but I actually want to break that round down because me and you talked about it right after. So it wasn't all TJ's fault. I'll let you elaborate mm-hmm. on it, Coach Pack. No, it's because they knew where they got the information where Selium was, and then he threw a smoke. And Austin just thought the smoke was in a different place than where it was, right? So he made a bad play and moved off the bomb when he, all he had to do was like wait for wait for Selium to push up, and they could have used teamwork together. So obviously everyone just sees like TJ losing that one v one on the bomb site at the end to Selium. But they didn't see. But like the rest of it was like bad communication and a bad play out of Austin, who I think played probably the best weekend out of anyone. Like he was fucking frying. Yeah, he was great. But he made a bad play before that that left TJ in the one v one, and then TJ obviously should have chowed in the one v one. He should have stayed down. There was like 18 seconds left. Selium had to push him. But I think that head glitch gives or that heady. Sorry, that heady gives everyone false confidence because it's like in the past, it's like I should win this. But in this game, all these guns barely recoil when they kill instantly and sell him as a dirty shot and he just picked him off the bomb yeah that so. heady sucks man it's not a real <laughs> it's, yeah it's not like, a real heady it's the auto aim there is insane if you're in that heady you're just getting ripped every time we've seen so many people die there but yeah i mean as soon as the it's like a rule like in cod kind of as soon as that smoke was popped there's two things he can be doing exactly what he was doing or running through that smoke at you on the All bomb right. So if Austin just lays down on the bomb and he has to jump the corner to kill him, TJ can trade it. And if not, the smoke blooms and then goes away. TJ dies and then Austin's in the same position. So, like, you just kind of play, like, the percentage and you just lay down and wait. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. Like, that was a – that's a tough round. But these guys clutched up that weekend, right? I can't be too mad about that because if you would actually told me going in, like, oh, we're going to get second place, I'd be like, word. 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 <laughs> like, you know what I mean? With the way that the team was struggling before that, realistically – I'm like, that's a good place, and what do you well, want just, from me? But just how well you guys played against, you know, Phase is just like, I mean, that right there alone, you know, like that's that's huge. Um, there's such a good squad, and then no, all I your agree. other all your other matches were great too. Like if that team played Phase two weeks before that, you would have gotten three zero smoke. We got obliterated, obliterated right? Yeah. And like you said, the thing about Cap, I don't really think it's all Cap. I think it was like Me other people's either. belief in Cap too. And Sheen brings a lot of communication and a lot of like vibes i guess is the word so it's not just like because it's not like gene played like some incredible individual weekend right 
but he did what he had to do. If you listen to listen ins, like his comp his comps were on point. He was just there doing what he needed to do for the team. So do it was like a good that, change in that sense. Do you think they need another change like roster? Um, if they're gonna end up being the best team in the world, then I, I do. I don't know what they're gonna need to do. They won't they it's not like it's gonna get done anyways. So what what's preventing uh them from like making moves for that? Is it money? Uh, money and then other teams willing to make moves as well. Like the the teams close to the salary cap. Yeah. Like the the players all make so much money that so they're they at the salary somebody. cap. Yeah, yeah. So they basically have to trade someone, and the people that they want to trade either no one wants people that they want to trade for to make these moves, or it doesn't make sense for the other team to take on either a big salary like that or the position that the guy would play. Mm. So yeah. it's, essentially, there's just they're forced to get better with the team that they have. But I mean, they I feel like they did. Coaches aren't a part of the salary cap, right? No, no, I don't think so. No, okay. definitely not. It's just the the roster and the subs. So, you think they move cap to coach? Um, no. Like, really? No, cap's a cap cap's coach. a player, man. He, I mean, he I mean, he could he could help. But you no, know I'm saying, do you think cap would coach? No, not really. Unless they like kind of force it upon him. I don't think he has any reason to get up every day and get on and watch a team play when he probably feels like he should still be starting. Yeah, I don't think Cap should stop playing either. I'm just wondering, like, yeah. if you'd rather be on a bench or be like... If, they, if he did that, that would be, like, basically saying, I'm not playing anymore, like, going forward. And I think that's a bad decision for Cap. Like, yeah. people talk a lot of crap about Cap, but he's still very... Serv- There's still people in this league that he's better than, for sure. Like, a decent, yeah. a decent number. Has any other team piqued your interest? Uh, would you coach for anyone else other than L.A.? I know the big factor of L.A. was Optic Gaming L.A. was one, it was in L.A., two, you're friends with a lot of those guys. So are there any other teams you would consider, you know, right away off the jump coaching? No, I wouldn't. Well, for one, that'd be me taking someone else's job well, in mean, this coaching world. Well, people have multiple coaches, right? So. Oh, yeah, I know. But then again, we're also in a pandemic. I don't think that people are hiring and also, extra anything right now. You wouldn't and take anybody else's I wouldn't, job? Not the coaches, per se. I don't I don't really want to – I don't think I'd want to go join another team right now. I'm not even sure contract-wise if I could. But Wait, really? So if you get I'm fired, not sure. contract-wise, I'm not you sure. can't join another squad? I'm not sure. You I know that was in a lot of people's out. contracts. That would be interesting. That there, be there's, like a, there's like a non-compete or something for the year or something like that. Sign a contract like that. So you're telling me if I get fired from coaching optic, I can't go coach phase. So you I don't know. You can just fire me and lose. Either way, I, it's not like it's something that. Oh, there's a lot that happened this year that I did not predict. Like, <laughs> I did not predict the team struggling off rip like that. I did not predict a global pandemic. I did not yeah. predict like a lot of this sh- that we'd be playing online with a team that's a bunch. Of, like half the team is infinitely better on LAN. Like, <laughs> not, did, great did not predict a lot of that stuff. Did What's great, up? You did great for an online format with that roster. Yeah. And no, whoever said in the chat that I still get paid, I don't still get paid. I mean, he probably not severance, but I'm not going to get into his I, pockets. Yeah, but it's not. No, I don't get paid still. I Man, am that a, put you in kind of a tough spot. What would you like to do next? You want to stay in COD, right? I want to stay in COD. Uh, if I, I mean, I, I, I've been contacted by a certain number of people. I won't say who for, you know. My own good and for those people that hit me up on the side but uh, i've been contacted by a few people i would love to stay in cod if i can't stay in cod i'm not really sure but i would love to stay in cod i probably like i mean it's just that we're in a tough in a different situation right now just globally but i mean i would love to if i don't stay team side i would look i would want to be a, someone that works with like behind the scenes trying to make sure that the cod esports is can be as good as it can be or go back to working with you on the desk. That would be lit, bro. Yeah, but none of those decisions are up to me. <laughs> I just have to sit back and wait like everyone else and just keep my head down and grind. Like, I've been – I mean, this is, came unexpected, right? Because I told you. They didn't contact me. They didn't tell me nothing. Yeah. I, I mean, so. yeah, it's kind of tough in the situation the world's in right now. I know this is yeah, yeah. the toughest spot you've been in in terms of, like, your career in COD outside of playing. Actually, I don't know. You've been on some pretty dog shit teams, like, playing wise. Oh, yeah. No, I have. <laughs> I mean, you're not, you're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, you, you could know, become a professional gambler. If you guys don't know in the chat, Pac has a really bad addiction to gambling, and he's horrible at it. It's, so. not, an, it's not an addiction, and I'm actually fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it is. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, it's not an addiction. Um, I think the, the only thing that 
the only thing that out of all this, well, one of the things is that truly pissed me off is this is the only thing that truly pissed me off. And I guess it's it's our podcast. I can be honest about this. Yes, you can say. Um, right. Let me tell you guys a story. So a long time ago, I used to team with Looney. Um, and this was like for two or three years in a row. And he told me before the season that he was going to leave and go team with TK. This is like my best friend in gaming. It's my duo, right? He told me he's going to go and team with TK after the season. And I was not mad at him. Even though we teamed for three years, blah, blah, had our ups and downs, like that was my guy. I was not mad at him because he told me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He told me straight up. And like as a friend, he's like, I'm going to tell you this. And this is this what I feel like is the best for me. And it ended up being the best for him. But like, yeah. that's what he told me. In this situation, Mud Dog, who's supposed to be my friend, didn't tell me shit. He texted me earlier in the day and was like, I got to talk to you later. And I'm like, okay. How many times did he text me that? A thousand. And he texted me like, yo, I got to tell you something later. I'm like, all right. Uh, I have this coaches meeting at three or four that we have to do. Schedule scrims, blah, blah, blah. He's like, okay, I'll text you. I'll, he's like, okay. So I asked like an hour later, yo, what's going on? Nothing. Didn't say a word to me, nothing. So he lets Damn. me do all this. He lets me schedule scrims in this coaches meeting and talk to all the coaches. And then calls me like two hours after he said he's going to call me and goes, uh, yeah, we're going a different direction. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You have a month to like vacate the premises and get the fuck out. Damn. <laughs> I didn't even know it went down like that. You told me a little bit about it. Sheesh, dude. That's so I'm like, wait, I mean, fine. No one, I'm not saying like it was his decision, but if that's how, like we're supposed to be friends, right? Yeah. Eric's such a, like a, I love Eric too. So it's just like his job must have been under fire as well. Um, I mean, but like, I'm not going to get into that. I just think from like, I don't know, I'm just trying to play, you know, the middle. I just think from like my perspective, if I'm a GM, um, I, and like you're my coach and I'm like not even as good of friends as he is with you, I guess. Um, I would like tell the, or I can't do it without this guy. I love him as my coach. If I truly believe in you as a coach. Um, if he didn't believe in you as a coach, that's another story then. That's fine. I mean, um, but I think, which is also fair. The team wasn't yeah. the team wasn't in first place. But wow, man, that sucks that that went down like that. I didn't know it was like just straight up call like that. Like you got to talk later. So that was it. I'm telling you, I had zero you. zero yeah. warning, zero anything, nothing. Damn. That was it. Like a, it's like a name on a piece of paper, like cold hard. Like where can we cut money? You know what's cut crazy, it. chat is I was like. A minute away from being the GM of Opti Gaming, I actually helped form that roster, and uh, John would have been employed if I was if I was there. You know, but I ended up. Uh, I, I actually called. Um, so uh, this is a story that nobody ever heard. I actually uh, was. I accepted the deal that Optic had offered me before the season started to be their general manager, and I accepted it, but I hadn't signed anything yet. And I, I called up, uh, you know, the talent people, um, and. Uh, they were like, yo, man, I, I know you want to be talented, so, et cetera, et cetera. This is what will do for you. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I was out, I, so I had to call Optic back, and I was like, yo, guys, I hope this doesn't ruin our, our relationship. You know, down the line, I'd love to work with you guys in the future. But I have to <clears> – <throat> I accept it. I have to decline it now. So, I, <laughs> so and that's just a funny story. That I never told the, the, the stream before. I just kept it. But it's funny. It's, just, it's funny now because if I was the GM, I would have been like, nope, we're keeping Pac-Man. Or I'm out too. <laughs> I mean, maybe we got to remember it would have been Kodiak hiring you, and they hired and they fired Kodiak already too. Yeah, that's Kodiak. True. Kodiak got a job with Evil Geniuses now. Good for him. I love Kodiak. But, man. That's where yeah, I initially guy. met Kodiak was Evil Geniuses, um, and he's one of the smartest people I've ever met. One of the best people I've ever worked with before. Uh, he was like pretty much when I joined Evil Geniuses, there was like two people that ran it. It was like PPD, Peter Dagger. Um, former pro for EG that won the international. He bought it. The guy bought his team. That's how ball in the sky was. And then hired his best friend Kodiak, who wasn't in gaming at the time. And they ran it. And Kodiak did everything. And then Kodiak went over to Immortals, where he did a ton of shit once again. And uh, I thought he did some really good things there. But it, it sounds like they're uh, downsizing, really. And they're just getting rid of some integral parts of their team. So, But hey, man, I wish them luck. Uh, that yeah, RBI me too. Pretty cool. The I, guy that that runs it. I mean, I hope that the team continues to start like improve too. Like, I'm not, I'm upset. I'm not gonna lie. Obviously, like my In life has to change uh, like drastically. But 
uh, I do hope the guy's success. Like, I, I want the players to win. I did become, like, better friends with them. That's so I, like, want them to, I still want them to win and that, all that. That's, I'm like, part of the reason. Not that salty. So, so there's, like, pros and cons to being, like, a coach, right? And you could talk about this. Being a coach or being a GM or being affiliated with a team is, like, things like this. You know, like, sometimes things can be, like, kind of out of your control. Like, you know, they got second and they improved and he still gets fired, you know? Um, and this could have happened even without the pandemic just because of the performance of the team and it's like you know it's it's tough that's why i'm glad i didn't go that route and that's i remember you talking to me like this is what you're worried about going into it yeah it is i can only do so much as a cod coach um and then you know it's still they're not like right now even right now this is proof that like coaches aren't as valued as they should be because there's like other coaches on other teams that are com- doing worse that are still not getting released and stuff. So it's like it's it just feels like coaches aren't valued by the organizations even as much as you know the community values. Well, because as players and the community, I feel like the coaches have grown in value immensely over the last couple of months or year. You could say that, but they also don't have like like to play a devil's advocate even against myself. They don't have the roster that I had going in right. Fair, so you. They might have not been uh, getting the, the results, but they also don't have like Slasher and Kenny and shit on their team. He's like some of the best players in the world. So to be fair, that that also exists. It's I just mean, it's just a tough situation. But yeah, this is what I was talking about in to, in private with Ant before the season. This is something that I did worry about because <laughs> I just know that if things don't go well like that, you're just the first person to blame. You're the easiest person to get rid of. The players have guaranteed contracts. You don't. So it's like, get this oh, fucking guy out of here. I forgot about that. Yeah, coaches yeah. don't have guaranteed contracts. Players do. That's Right. That's tough. So, I mean, hmm. it is what it is. But what is, you know what's crazy is? If this, the only reason I even went with this is because when the schedule for this season was first announced, yeah. you were supposed to be flying every single week. Yeah, so chat. You were supposed so, to be flying every single week so, so here's to a different location. Thing. So me and John both love, you know, on air talent desk work. I mean, we run a goddamn show. Come on. We love doing this stuff. And um, when we first got, you know, pitched the offer next year, it was like we were flying every single week. And it wasn't even the tournament format at the time. And you guys all know, I mean, you guys didn't agree with that format and neither did they. So that's why they ended up changing it. But like, imagine that schedule, you know, as a human being. So this is how it works. We have rehearsal days. So we don't just work on the show days. We would have flown out every Wednesday and then we would have flown back Monday and then if it's like West Coast because John lived in Philly at the time or like East Coast not even Columbus we're getting back you know at a god awful time on Monday it's probably not even a direct flight and then and there's a couple West Coast teams like three four or some of it and you're supposed to be flying to Paris and yeah. stuff like so we would have been away from home like non-stop and also I have pets and like stuff <laughs> like it just <laughs> like for the quality of life would have been very difficult. So like that's why I was considering like going somewhere else. And like John ended up going with Optic, but then it all got changed. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, like after, right after I signed the the rules got changed. <laughs> Thankfully, so I think it's made for a very incredible season. I'm glad they made that change. That was the best decision. This it was a good change, made. and yeah. like even just like for all everyone involved. Like I don't even know how production would have survived if it was every week. I really oh, don't. Oh man, I yeah uh, yes. Yes, I, I know they wouldn't have survived that. I mean, everybody would have been at their wit's end. I just probably looked a little like the. It probably looked great on paper, like they did all the logistics. You know, they have millions of dollars, and they're like, we could do this. <laughs> no <laughs> way that would. Have yeah, it'd have been like your weekend would have been you flying back home and like sleeping just because you're so tired from the from working all week, and then getting back on a plane. Well, the flying back across the country or across the world. Like, I don't think all the production would have to fly every time. It would have been, so they, it would have maybe been okay. The casters would have worked two weeks and then one weekend off, and then we would have went oh, every yeah. week. So every John was pretty week. much like, fuck that, bro. I'm an old man. I can't travel every single week. <laughs> Which I get it. How come you didn't take the CDL job? What do you mean? I work for the CDL, Trenix. I did take it. I love this. I, I remember I texted my boss, and he was like, hey, man. If you wait, we're like, we'll take care of you. Um, if this is truly what you want to do, you prove it. And I was like, all right, I'll wait. Because I was like, I'll, I'll wait. And then, like, I waited. And then at that, at that point, all the other job offers I had, which was, like, three, had gone away because the season was getting closer and they had to hire people. And I was just, like, proving my loyalty to the CDL at that point that I love to do this stuff. And and uh, they ended up, you know, 
being cool. So that worked for me. But uh, what's next for you, Pac? What's uh, what, uh, what would you like to do next? You haven't told um, me what you want to do. I just told you. I think I'd, I would, if I could pick, would go back to the desk. Um, if not, if I'm not picking, I would, I mean, I might end up working for just an org in general. Yeah. Like, maybe not in a CDL org. What about just, CS and stuff? I know you've had an interest in, like, CS and stuff. In the past. Yeah, and there's, like, ba there's Valorant. I mean, not, oh, yeah. not to toot my own horn, but in terms of knowledge and gaming in general, I feel like I'm in, like, the top. I'm in the top percentage of people who knows what the fuck is going on because I'm good at these games and I watch all the time. I'm always paying attention. So I'm always I'm always there. I'm always there. And there's certain people that are in the know that do know that. Yeah. But I've spent my life in Call of Duty. So I'd rather stay in Call of Duty than start venturing off into these, right into these other like, games and stuff. Right as like COD's blowing up to I like. Yeah, I exactly. Guys, That'd be a weird... I know a lot of people have a lot of like gripe with how COD is and stuff, but it's actually really doing really well this year, like better than it's do ever done. Like, especially with like the switch to YouTube and everything going on, like COD's doing great. Not only that, like Warzone's the number one game in the world, like Call of Duty as a brand overall is doing great. So um, as it's blown up, like, I feel like you want to stay in COD, right? Like if you were yeah. going to make that switch to another game, it would have happened in prior years. It's just you might not have many options in the middle of the season, which is like. Well, yeah, that's just like I also feel like I wouldn't want to work for a like I would like especially after this situation. Like say say Rise got like an investment and could actually I could go work for them. I would go work for them in a heartbeat because yeah. I trust them. I love them. Blah blah blah. If stuff goes wrong, which stuff goes wrong all the time, it's impossible for things to always go smooth. They'll talk to you. You know what I mean? Like that's a simple human courtesy that. I think that now that it's gone more to like the esports is such a big business now that is going away. Like, so I would go to work for them. If I was going to go work for another org or a franchise, I'd have to be with people that I trust. And yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? But <laughs> anyways, we spent a lot of time talking about that. Um, yeah. Chat, before we move on to like tournament stuff, is there anything that you guys want us to cover on that topic? Because we kind of branched off a little bit into like different things. Um, is it true of Dashy and TJ being late? What an unimportant question. <laughs> uh, remember, try to stay on topic, guys. We'll, <laughs> we'll do a general Q&A at the end of the stream. Uh, Torto, that's a good question, but I'm trying to stay on topic to this whole thing. Are you? I mean, he answered that, Easy Mac. By the way, shout out to Easy Mac for the stats every week. Uh, do you know if Optic has a replacement in the works? He already answered that. He said no. Yeah. No. How's the team chem and Optic throughout the season so far? That's a good one. Like, how's the terrible the roster? Terrible. A lot of arguments. Terrible. But I mean, you have a bunch of people that are used to winning, not winning. I don't think you'd ever be. If it was good, I'd be. It would be weird. <laughs> They're not winning, and so I mean, I think that the last tournament might have helped a lot. Like that was the weird part. It felt like. Like, even after we lost, TJ hit the group chat, and he's like, that was on me. Like, that, like the reason we lost is my fault. That was and everyone, like, got his back instantly. Like, you dropped, I, like, said, you dropped 40 the first map. Chin was like, what? You were going crazy. Like, it was a one mistake. That's not why we lose as a team. Like, it felt like the team was coming together. No one said anything. Like, I don't know. I think, so, I feel like maybe that winning could help. Yeah. And also, it's a weird situation because you just got second, and the next tournament is, like, the easiest one of them all. Next tournament, the best team there is Huntsman, who don't have Big P, who is an integral part of any team that he's on. And that's the best team there. And then it's London Royal Ravens, who you beat. Gorillas, who, like, I mean, Brocker, <laughs> Subliners, Legion, and Surge. Like, that is a potential championship right there. If you guys, yeah, I, I could see game. them winning. If they beat the Rock, they play for Rocker first. If they beat they them, I, I honestly could see them winning. Exactly. They play Rocker. And they play Paris or Chicago, and like a nerf Chicago. From I'm predicting they're going to be nerfed, and then <laughs> you know, like you could, they could win that for sure. So like, it's tough, man. Um, and it's also, I don't know, if they end up winning, then it's like, oh fuck me, I don't need, I don't even need to be the coach anyways, right? <laughs> All right, but I think we can move topics. I don't think any. Did you read the chat? Were there any questions? Um, did OGLA have any analysts helping you out? I, I, I was, I split, talked about this earlier. I'm telling you, there was, they did literally nothing to help in terms of that. There's no, there's no analyst. Phase, like some teams have three coaches. Empire? Empire has. Empire has. It's just Ray, but I mean, they're just winning, right? Yeah, and then Phase has 
couple people. Faze has like three guys. Three. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they then, have Easy Mag. And then New York has Revan year. and JP. And you know how smart. Yeah. Like JP's crazy with like the numbers and whatnot. Easy Mac is Easy Mac and and and, and uh, JP are. That's an amazing tool to have. Like they track map percentage wins and scrims and stuff. Who Huntsman has Sender and who else? Is it just Sender? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just Sender. Not every team has it. And yeah. I think that a lot of that has to do with how much maybe their rosters cost or yeah. whatever. I don't I don't I don't even think you need one, but it helps. It could help. Yeah. I don't think you need it. Um any other questions that you saw? Uh I wasn't looking. I I don't who you think was the key player of Optic so far? Definitely uh Slasher. Slasher and Kenny. Slasher's just the most important because in practice he's the leader. He's definitely the leader of the team. I feel like so, for the team's success, it's like TJ though. Just cause and I just because I trust Slasher and Kenny to always play well, but like TJ is like the guy that if he's consistent, you guys are good because it's like the triple whammy there. And Dash is gonna shoot straight. But like when TJ's making <laughs> the right plays and he's playing well, it's typically because he's making the right plays and being annoying on the map. So like I think he's the most important to the team's success, like perf- like his individual performance. Because um, he played great this weekend, and they were way different. And it's like, I feel like you guys are waiting on him all season long. What do you think it was that made him get way better just now? I mean, he, it, I mean, it's just his comfortability on the map. He did that same thing at the, the last LAN home series. What was it? The LA home series LA on home LAN. Series, yeah. He played amazing there, too. It's just when the team is not doing well, he's going to get shit on because the way he plays, he just plays super hyper aggressive. So when the team's not clicking, it's going to look a lot worse on him. I don't think that it's just him to blame. Okay. Uh, I wasn't. I think the most important so person. No, no, no. I, I know. But on paper, it just looks like he's getting completely deuced on. I think the most important person to actually to the success is Dashy. Like if you're talking about in game, because when, when Brandon plays correctly, the team is frying. Because I don't, I don't think there's anyone in the world that shoots straighter than Brandon. He's His just, problem is he's just a big dummy. <laughs> the problem is he does like he reacts slow sometimes doesn't push things out fast enough but when he's playing correctly the team like like this past weekend when he was playing well the team's hard point actually looked strong how much work did you put into that brandon individually? i mean there's a there's a lot of yelling about brandon in par- in practice it wasn't like me mostly i would say they like between slasher and kenny uh they were little gaskets over time <laughs> but i mean it's all because they just want to win right and they know not he's like, capable of it i don't know if you guys have been watching the jordan documentary but it's kind of like that it's like, so good his teammates could be his teammates could be mad at him say whatever you want but at the end of the day jordan's trying to win so he's if he's cussing you out it's because he wants to win dude jordan teared up at the end of the, was the last episode thinking about it i was like man i just wanted to bring the best out of those guys he's teared up he yeah. probably ruined so many friendships and stuff because of that but yo, I mean, he's probably. Goaded down. But it, how do you? I mean, it's the same thing with Kobe. How do you? Yeah. They don't know how to separate, like, turn off, like, that competitive fire in order to win. Then, yeah. like, by coddling you, it's not, that's not how they do it. Mm-hmm. But whatever, it's kind of right. like that. That's enough about all that, guys. Um, but now that Pac-Man's, you know, not a coach anymore, we can finally fucking do predictions. This guy got fired, <laughs> so we can talk <laughs> about predictions and stuff. And you know, even with Optic Bear, he can. Tell me what he thinks is going to happen. But let's run through the last tournament real quick because that tournament was lit. I'm sure you watch all the games, as I do. And that was probably the best tournament we've had like throughout the season. I, there's probably a little recency bias on it. At least the best Sunday, I felt like. It was like the most I think it was the best Sunday. tournament overall. Yeah. Like in terms of, Maybe not in terms of the level of competition, I guess you could say, because Dallas wasn't in it. Just entertainment, but dude. The entertainment factor, of it, I think that was the best tournament for that sure. That was unbelievable, dude. And also, what we were talking about, I just want to say that, like, I'm just going to flat out say it. Screw you. Uh, Toronto won 3-1 versus New York, and you said that New York was going to body them, and so did Asim, and so did got our ex. And you guys yeah, Toronto, completely Toronto right. surprised and played. Toronto got way better, dude. Uh, I'm still not sold on that crap. I, I don't think that that's the case. I feel like if, if New York played them again, New York would win. I'd they still played pick New York. They played you guys tight, too. Oh, yeah. But they in scrims, they always beat us. Or they always beat Optic in scrims. Literally every single time. <laughs> if I showed you the map record, Toronto's map record recently in scrims against them is like... 19 and 3. They're not a scrim team, bro. They're clearly a tournament squad. They played Ooh, so no, well. Toronto is better in scrims. I mean, <laughs> performance the last two tournaments has been good. 
Um, and they could have beat you guys, bro. They could have been. They could beat you guys. They could have. Oh, they could have. They would have got could've. waxed though by ATL if they played them. So, God, got the optic <laughs> ATL match. Um, but uh, so what like surprised you about this tournament? Other than you know, your I spot. think you know what's actually crazy. What actually surprised me, low key. The doms this weekend were actually super entertaining to watch. Like, pretty across the board. They were fucking lit. Like, no way around it. They were lit. Extre- extremely lit. We had a 156 to 154, bro. Like, was that the New York had, match? Was yeah, that, we had some. What game was that? Uh, it was New York I mean, first phase, right? Uh, what was that? Yes. Chat? The 156, 154. The, the Hackney Dom between them, I believe. Yeah, yeah. dude. That map and then was lit. We lost a one point domination to Toronto to go to, like, there was a lot of like, even though I was like, "Fuck," there was a lot of super close Revan said, I'm games. Out of peace. <laughs> Dude, that, that was <laughs> wait, crazy. Revan should be happy. I don't know why he's pretending. Revan's team won Doms. They don't win Doms. They won Doms. It was lit. Not only that, like, Revan, like your squad, your your teams have been cheeks for like two years, bro. You, just, you should be happy, dude. Team's getting better. Wait, you, you know, side note, what's funny? I, uh, Revan and I were talking. In between, because he was like, "Yo, congratulations, making it to the bracket." Like, this is while the tournament's still going on. We might even end up playing each other. But he's like, "Shoot, it's been tough out here. Congratulations, going to the bracket." <laughs> and then, and then we get second, or we go to the finals. He's like, "Let's go, employment. Like, we get to keep our jobs." Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> and then I got a fucking. Fire. And Revan's chilling, bro. Chilling in his New York. Revan's chilling in his New York penthouse with his analyst JP bringing him coffee and drinks. <laughs> Getting fed statistics, just spewing it off to the roster. Just telling accuracy, like, yo, you're a good leader, man. <laughs> no, nah, I'm joking. Revan's the man. No, he is. I hope, they, I hope that the New York continues to do well. I feel like Revan's been in some shit situations. I don't think anyone has had a team choke more spots than Revan's teams have. Like, even if you go back to champs last year, his team should have beat United, who oh, ended up winning. laying into, into John right now. Just think about it. His team should have won that. Yeah. He, his team probably should have got to the winners' finals, at least. Sheesh, brother. Um, so, in that tournament, you guys started off. Uh, it was your first game against London, and you London guys lost. lost. And Kenny, and that was honestly uncharacteristic of him. He didn't jiggle peek the window. Were you pissed about yeah. that, bro? No, I, I don't get pissed about. I like during the games. I like to stay level headed. But in your mind, I, oh, I mean, in my mind, I'm pissed we lost. But <laughs> we didn't lose. We didn't lose because Kenny didn't jiggle peek the window. We lost because of a lot of other things. We lost both hard points, <sighs> and we lost because I mean, even before that, Cheen died challenging him across the mat. <sighs> so, so like, everyone only always only sees the ending, but Cheen shouldn't have died there. Man. Cheen shouldn't have even fought that one v one against Shawnee across the mat. Man, that match was lit too. But can you break down that series for me? Like, what went wrong? I don't even remember that. I mean, we just lost the hard points to them. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we lost the hard points to them. You can't lose two hard points to a, like a good team like that. And then in the S and D, we just made mistakes. Like there was a dashy in that last game was going crazy. Mm-hmm. And then I think sometimes when you're going crazy, you start feeling yourself too much. She like got a blood, and then like randomly decides to slide at people with his pistol for no reason when we have man advantage. I'm like, yo. How were the servers <laughs> this weekend, by the way? Uh, I mean, they, my team was still complaining, but of course. Uh, they said like it was better overall. Sweet. There was just still times where they would just lag nonstop. Like <laughs> they said, I mean, you can't really tell when you watch the game in Codcaster. You can't tell the players are lagging because yeah. you'd be like, yo, right there, I would, we literally were frozen. But you can't tell that. So, so then you guys played Paris. You bopped them. London, you bopped them. Like, what was it like during that? You guys were finally just stringing together maps. Yeah, that was that was like that felt so good. The the three O's, the back to back three O's. I just knew we'd be Paris. Even though we lost them at like the very, 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 very beginning They've of the season. Worse, I just, huh? It's not even that. Oh yes, they have gotten worse. They made a roster, they made like a roll switch. Like Luca runs the main AR, Dens doesn't. It just it's a weird position. But our players are just higher caliber players than than their players. I just I just had a lot of faith in the going into the series against Can Paris. Paris even get back to like top eight contention, you think? Um, I think they can. It's With just how an uphill good all battle. These other teams are getting like, like you got to think to get to like top eight contention, you got to be able to upset a couple of those teams. And like, are they beating Phase? Nope. Empire? Nope. You know, Huntsman? Nope. Optic? Nope. Toronto? <laughs> maybe Subliners? Nope. Um, I think that it's up to like. It feels like when I watch them, this could be completely false. But it feels like when I watch them, like that that uh, Kiz has not 
put up the same yeah, numbers. He doesn't look as comfortable that. on the map right now. So I think that he needs to like find a way. They need to find a way to make him comfortable so he can become a superstar for that team for them to have a chance. Well, Denz was at like being top incredible eight. in the beginning of the season as well, and it's like. I don't know. It's just something's changed for the team. I don't think they can get back up. It's like what we talked about before the season began. It's like, yeah, they're good, but the quality of players on the roster, on the team, it's as soon as all these other teams figure out how to play, because COD's essentially simple, and all the pro players are like going to return to the form that they were at some point in the season. And once that happened, now they're just not really competing anymore. Um, what about Florida, dude? You watch any of their games? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really focus on the Florida one. They were out really fast. Yeah, but I kind of ex- like low key kind of expected it. I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. I like they didn't win a map though, and it's like they oh, I didn't know they didn't win a map. If you'd have told me that, I, I actually didn't know that. I would they, get... <laughs> and it's like it's not even like they played like the craziest team. They played Minnesota, who they beat before, and then you know right after that they played New York. So it's like, what the hell happened? Nah. There? That's pretty hard. That's pretty no, hard. I know, but like for a team that, <laughs> that just won, though, like a team that just won to not win a map, like it's crazy to me. Um, yeah, I what mean, do you attribute that to you. You said you never scrimmed them, so you probably can't even speak. No, yeah, them. we we like never scrimmed Florida, so I don't really know. But what we did before, we don't. I don't think we really scrimmed them since they picked up Pharaoh. Maybe once before that, I was surprised that they did so well. Like even at that first home time where they got second, and then when they won, I was super surprised. No, so like when you were like, if you'd have told me going in who I'd pick against Florida against Minnesota, I'd pick Minnesota. And then right before the match, if you told me New York versus Florida, I'd pick New York. Yeah, that's so I, I wasn't was, surprised that they went out 0 2. So, in my opinion, I got a ton of tweets about like why uh, I don't have Florida in like my top four teams, you know, after they won and stuff. And like, that's why, chat, like that, that's like a prime example. Like, I think Florida's a perennial underdog threat. Um, and if the tournaments are on land, I don't, probably don't think they ever win a championship, you know, at least right now. And I just can't put them above certain squads, certain rosters that consistently, you know, will compete. And they have the talent to even when, like, the team work's not there to just out-talent people. Um, and that's, like, a prime example right there. Because you won't see FaZe, Empire, Huntsman, like, go 0-6. And, like, yeah, you there's there's, there's a possibility first. that randomly they go 0 2 for the weekend. It's possible. Yeah. But, but I don't think you'll see it where they don't go without winning a map. Yeah. Like the way somebody gets goes 0 2, like a Huntsman or something, is like they lose a really crazy 3 2 loss. And then, you know, they play a hard team after that or something. You know what I mean? That's like the only way that happens. Um, but yeah. That's Why are you guys in the chat saying Pharaoh is like God online? <laughs> Pharaoh is uh, a beast on land. Yeah, <laughs> like what? what about he's nasty? London? What did you think about you know that change in action? Shawnee played pretty good individually. What do you think's the problem with the London right now? Uh, I think they get in their own head. I feel like they're just honestly. I've always said this. I feel like they're soft for some reason. I really do. So like that's that stuff that happened with them in the first map against ATL is supremely unlucky. Oh, like I feel to get water. That's hilarious. I feel like it's not even. There's no question in my mind that they should have a replay. Like I, what I don't understand, they, they should have been able to replay that map. That's I, that's just horseshit. In the it, game, but in I don't. Game. I don't know the full details of it. Like, how fucking long does it take to fill up a goddamn water bottle, dude? Like, even if he says, even if they said they were good to start it and they start it, and you go fill up water, what are you doing? Like, it was scraps, Millie I mean, Rocky in front of the you go fridge. Take a, you go to the bathroom, take a piss, go grab some water. Like, regardless. Regardless, if he's not there at the very beginning of the game, the players are going to be like, yo, don't start the damn game. Especially starting bad side of Hackney. They're like, don't start the game. And then as the game goes on, it makes it look a lot worse. But they just weren't playing. You think FaZe like, threw that second map? No, absolutely not. They got body slammed. Okay. <laughs> no, that's that's another thing. That's why I call them soft. So after they lose a series, after they destroy them game two, they credit the entire thing to them losing game one. Which they, like, you're playing FaZe and Hardpoint. Even if it's your best map, it's still Hackney bad side, and there's a decent possibility that FaZe wins that regardless. So after you win game two the way they did, they like they basically curb stomp FaZe in game two, you bounce back. Like, put that shit behind you and bounce back. They're just playing a really good team in FaZe. FaZe beats them. Afterwards, after they lose the whole thing, you're, to say, like, my head still wasn't in it from that first map that's four so hours bad. ago, that's it's so, so that's such horseshit. Like, you lost. You just lost. Yeah, that's soft. It's definitely soft. I just thought that, you know... With London, that being said, they should be able to play that first map over. 100%. <laughs> so, 
So, I think London are still a change away from being like a top four team. Think good thing about London is though is like they're like right there for me. Like they're they'll always be a good series, and they're like right there. So I think they still need to make one more change. I don't think Shawnee was the initial player they wanted as well. I think it was uh, nasty. They wanted the nasty. Yeah. Um, I think uh, we're like one change away from being there. And I just don't know who you change. I, I, it's just weird. Like, I know, you know, Jerd isn't the Jerd he once was. But you don't get rid of Jerd. It's like, do you just I mean, people someone? say that about Jerd and Dylan in this game. But I feel like the people on that team – have a certain play style yeah, that, that makes exactly that makes it harder for them to go off. Like, yeah. and you just need uh, say, say what you want, fine. but the team just yeah. Shawnee play play. played oh, Shawnee, Shawnee played better than I thought. Honestly, maybe it's time to change. The team just needs a they need better teamwork, man. Because they're close in these games, they're not closing them out. So like, it's something that they could turn around, turn around. And yes, what Ben said in the chat, like Trey doesn't solve their problems. Although Trey is really fucking good. So I mean, him on that team for. Shawnee would probably make them a bit better. They but already they tried a, this. They, they always end up fighting issue. and yeah. they end up fighting and they don't like each other. Like, yeah, the same thing happened last season, right? Before they went off and form phase, and they like start fighting before that. Yeah, well, they always see, end up fighting. Well, this guy said the chat: <laughs> Dylan is average and Jared is below average. Both those players are incredible talents. It's just not utilized properly. Like they haven't learned how to play the game the right way. Like they're not. It's not. It's not the same as when we watch Empire play. And shots you know you're running around. Like, yes, Jared and Dylan can do that. Like, we saw it last year. We see glimpses of it this year. It's just, I mean, like, Weskin's going triple positive every map, and he's a beast. Like, he's nasty. But, like, there needs to be more shine on the subs. They need to change their play style up a bit. Um, but, yeah, I think they're close. But I think that we pretty much wraps to, like, talk about that tournament. Um, you still have FaZe, the best team in the game, or Huntsman, or not Huntsman, or Empire? Uh, I mean, I think that Dallas is the best team in the game right now. I agree. Uh, until, until FaZe beat them again, then I'm just going to leave it like that. I mean, they have their really solid team, also really good online. Like, they're, they're just really good, so I'd give it to them. But it's not like it's a, it's not a large gap between them and FaZe and whoever you consider the third best team. Chicago with Pierce. Well, let's do some predictions, John, for the next one. Now that we can finally do them. So in Group A, we have we're gonna do predictions chat for the next the Seattle uh, home series, London versus LAG, and then Seattle versus New York. Who's winning each of those matchups? I'll take London and New York. All right, I'm gonna go. Although on. that Seattle that Seattle New York one's gonna yeah. is like actually enables back enables back, which we'll talk about. I think. I don't even know if there's an announcement tweet. Maybe I just announced nah, it. No, I think no, no, they did. Okay. <laughs> they, they, so, they're the ones that said that. <laughs> and Abel's back, and I think he from Team Pine from the Gauntlet. He's going to be nasty, and they're going to beat New York. <laughs> and then London is going to beat LAG. And then who's going to win that? Who's going to win the series that you have between New York and uh, London? New York. All right, and then New York like three one. Okay, and then who's uh, coming out of, of the losers bracket there? Uh, would be I'm gonna say Seattle. Yep. Uh, so I have well. So you have New York and Seattle then. I have yeah. Seattle and London coming out. I think um I think those will be the two squads that make it. Don't there. think New York will make it out of the bracket at all. No, I think they're gonna lose. I think they're gonna lose. <laughs> I like London in that. Um. Okay. And then in Group B we have Paris versus Chicago, and we have Minnesota. Chicago. Minnesota versus OGLA. So I think. I think OGLA, I don't know. What do you got? Uh, no, I have OGLA beating Minnesota and then also OGLA beating Chicago. If they're playing with Jordan General, for sure. Okay, so I have OGLA I don't losing think they will be. because they lost their coach and savior, Pac-Man. <laughs> I think Minnesota's going to win that one. I also think Minnesota's a really good team. They'll bounce back and beat them. And then they're going to beat Chicago. And then Chicago is going to knock out OGLA. And that'll be the squads out. How does that bracket work out though? After that, I don't even know how. Flips uh, the winners, whoever comes out, the winners plays the guy, the team that comes out of losers in the other one. All right, so then, so, so that means I would have Minnesota versus uh, sorry, I've seen, I don't know, Minnesota versus London. So Minnesota would win that and then be in the final. And then you would have who? 
OGLA versus I would have who would I have OGLA versus Seattle. I had New York come out of my winners. Okay, so so yeah, that's what I would have. Okay, and then in, in my other one, this is getting so confusing. Wish I could put this on. It's screen. not that confusing. And I get the, it. Okay, so then who's your final? Uh, so the other side it'd be OGLA versus New York. So that that'd be your final, and then who wins? Yeah, uh, New York. Damn. All right. So then I think the way my mind works out is it would be Minnesota versus Seattle in the final. Yeah, that'd be my final. And then I think Seattle wins it, bro. Lit. <laughs> Your bracket is what? Watch. I've been making crazy calls now because I made crazy calls last one and it worked out great. Dude, listen. Winning and coming out of the bracket are, like, completely different, though. Oh, listen, guys. Listen, guys. So, hear me out, right? There's hear a lot out. of cap. No, no, hear me out. Your app. I'm starting to make crazy calls because, one, the competition's getting more fierce. Stuff's starting to change around here. And the last time I saw Seattle, they looked decent, right? They, lo- they looked okay. I mean, they were still kind of ass, but they looked better. And now they brought Enable back, and Enable's been in the gauntlet. And I just have faith in the Seattle team, bro. I've been talking to Octane. I have faith in the Seattle team. I'm making some crazy calls go- going forward. I did this last weekend, and, like, it was really close. I said OGLA was, like, uh, I said Minnesota was going to win. Then I did my, like, crazy prediction, and I said OGLA was going to win. I tweeted it out on Saturday and in the morning of Sunday. OGLA Wait, so you, almost You said won. Minnesota was going to win the whole thing, though. I did, but I also Which made, is, couldn't have been more no, wrong. I'm, but listen, I changed my prediction <laughs> on Saturday, and I said I'm going to start... After they already lost. I said I'm going to start making <laughs> crazier predictions. Well, you guys weren't in a good good situation going into... No, Saturday. I'm saying, but after Minnesota lost, you changed your prediction. Yeah, but you guys weren't in a good I mean, situation. yeah, it's Saturday. real easy. So it's not like you guys are winning that I'm, I changed my stuff up. But I'm just saying, I'm starting to make crazier calls. And there's, right, a method, there's a method behind the madness, guys, and you will see. We'll return, and I will screenshot all this bullshit in the chat, and Seattle will be in a great spot right there. Here's Tell the you. thing, though. Here's the thing, though, with Seattle. Let's say they improve in the respawns. The teams with, with Enable on them that have, been, that have been championship teams in the past, they weren't, like, good at respawns. They were fucking dominant. Yeah, they were dominant. They were amazing at respawns. Do you think Seattle is that good at respawn? Because I don't. Mm. I think they're good. Solid. We just talk about this, like, but they're not good enough to dominate the respawns, which means been, and I already know they're gonna suck. They're gonna suck balls at search and destroy. They just suck at it. Who's been weak on Seattle for you? From, from just from the eye test, no, let's not look at any stats. I feel like Karma's been kind of weak. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. I mean, from the eye test, I hate saying Damon because I wouldn't drop Damon. That. That's what everyone's Damon. brains but work. The, but what I'm but, thinking though is like. He does he still have it in him to like take over games? I think so. Nah, I don't, don't think so. I don't know if the observers even watch Karma. <laughs> I don't think he has it in him to take over the game. He still has, he still he probably can obviously, but not like on a consistent basis. And I mean that's what you have like Where that's what you I have Sam for. That's what you have Karma. Sam for. That's what you have App for. Even Ian sometimes. I forget that like I like forget like Damon doesn't get shit on really. I mean sometimes I forget Damon. It's like a three-time champion, like <laughs> just because of how underwhelming Seattle's been, the three-time world champion. Like they, Karma used to dominate games. I'm gonna keep uh, my uh, <laughs> Karma a little bit more this weekend. Be looking for him to like step it up a bit. Slack's had some big games recently. He's had some. He's been a little inconsistent. I think those two. Yeah, I could turn my volume up a little bit. I think I think Slack's very good. I don't. I, I don't know. I think I think Jerry's good. I think, man. I think, I think he's a really good player. Smart. Yeah, I feel like I, I think I their problem is just search. They don't. They do not have a good ver- a good roster for search and destroy. Just Joey Nubsy and the boys are fighting an amazing uphill battle mm-hmm. <laughs> in search. Every single search and destroy against, no matter who they're going up against, they are the underdog, and it's not close. Damon has said that he has red boxes every time he plays, though. So I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys also have to know that Damon like says things. I think Damon's teams, <laughs> Damon's teams just need to, he, they need to get him to finals. <laughs> that's that's what they gotta do. Get Damon to finals, bro. It's been like that for a while now, and then he'll just like do the rest. I mean, if your team is fi- is like on point, and knows what they're doing. Damon is not gonna be the reason you lose. Never, he'll never be there. He's he's super intelligent in game. He's just nasty yeah. at games. Oh yeah, he's he always, is actually really and, good at and games. like realistically for like the last like 
four years, three years, he's been the same player. Like, if his team sucks, he's going to look like ass. But, like, <laughs> if his team's good, he looks incredible. Uh, he, he, you don't live or die by Damon. He's just, like, a really good player. He's going to help the squad out. Um, I mean, they would play Chicago, Minner, OGLA to get the finals. Yeah, that is, that is a tough road. That's yeah, but it's different, though. There's no Pac-Man on OGLA. <laughs> Minnesota are deflated because that was the one. And then you look at Chicago, and there's no Big P. So, there it is. Uh, I'm still mind-blown by that move. <laughs> crazy. If they play with Jordan, how do you think they do? Um, I think that they end up losing in the bracket. Here's the thing about Generals. Like, yes, he's a sub, but, like, General was placing good last year, and he always shoots straight. He's not horrible. Like, General's not a bad player. That's actually probably one of the better substitute players in the entire league. No bullshit. Oh, yeah. I General, think General, can play, General can play Call of Duty. He, he can, usually, he can play he's just off. usually a main AR, and he has to run a sub. I think General should have been a starter on a team. We talked about this earlier in the season. That kid's fucking good, dude. People who I think, like him and, like, Nagafin. I don't know. Like, Nagafin didn't even get a spot in the league, period. I'm yeah. mind blown. Dude, here's the thing about General is this guy's teams have been ass- forever like <laughs> like i i put myself in like a situation where i've had some ass teams right and and i've been good at certain games i'm like fuck my team sucks what do i do i'm not gonna stand out here and he's had some pretty dog shit teams and he's made it work like and he's been great so i think i think he would be fine i think he should be starting somewhere but you know i just don't know the quality of practice that he's been getting is like gotta be terrible and I yeah, feel like this game like without if, practice. If you're a sub, you have to like you have to make a concerted effort to make sure you can get into as many tens lobbies as possible and get all those kind of games. But that's not great practice, but that's all you have. I haven't watched no. is Nagfin good at this game. I mean his uh, team just won the his team just won the yeah. M Challenger Cup. So what do you true. like Naga's always been straight. There's always the fans that say like people, random yeah. people like that are just ass. Like how is Naga fin ass? Yeah. This guy got second at champs, sec third at champs, second twice last year. How is it possible that he's ass? He probably what would is, be what, kinda nutty with What the is the MVP definition stuff? of ass to you? <laughs> <laughs> Who they like and dislike. Yeah, like what? We've been going for like an hour and three minutes now. So uh let's uh Let's uh, take some questions from the chat. I think we covered, like, everything we wanted to cover. It's like a really fun episode. We're chill. We're chill <laughs> this episode. You guys, any questions in the chat? We were going to do the uh, bringing people on, the calls. I'm kind of scared to do that a little bit. I mean, I feel like if we do do that, we can bring on viewers that we know are in here often. Because I don't feel like they would go out of their way to... To try to screw us over. We need a moderator. We like yo but, yeah. yo, phase Ben. Ben and Jay Nissim. Next weekend or next excuse me, Jesus. Next week, Wednesday, would you be down to come in here and host a Q and A with us? But like vet the people coming into the call. I'm asking a lot of TJ, you right there. TJ Halley says, Why did I chow sell? Because you wanted to be gone, Teach. You wanted me, well, on, first you wanted of all, me on the streets all right, begging so the, for change. There is a – I think the community you knows – You motherfucker. You <laughs> motherfucker. I didn't even listen to what you were wanted, saying right there. This guy wanted me on the streets, bro. Here I am. <laughs> begging, bro. Straight begging. Yo, Teej, bro. Who's his replacement, bro? You bring it on, <laughs> a, you bring it on a, a, another Caucasian Teej? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wait, fuck Teach. <laughs> uh he said, What? <laughs> um Yeah, so next week we're gonna bring people on, but like you guys need to we're gonna vet you before you come into the call so you don't say any wild shit. And you'll probably get roasted. Okay, John, let's take some questions. You first. <laughs> Um, why do people always ask, do you think Haggy should be in the league? Absolutely not. Nope. Absolutely. No not. chance. No way. No uh, chance. Who do you think is the best player in the game? Sell him? Yeah, I think so. I have sell him. Uh, guys Shotzi. Shotzi simp. Slasher. So, the Swede asked, even if you're underperforming, do you make a big change just because of the game or do you keep the squad for next year? Whoa, no, you focus wait, on, wait, on right now. Wait, championship right are are now. you, is his job as a, what's his job? Is his job to, the GM? Is his job like, what is his job? And Kyle, you just focus, in general, you kind of focus on right now. You focus on right now. 
Because you don't, you like, you don't, like, how the fuck you make a team for the next year? It's not basketball. You can't, like, ah, you know, we suck. Let's just revamp at the end of the season. You don't know what game's coming out next year. Your next team could suck, too. Focus on right now. <laughs> That's true. Especially uh, if you're at, like, salary cap. Like, then you really focus on right now. Um, Should Sensor hang it up? He can do whatever he wants, man. Sensor's a millionaire. Yeah, that's a weird question. I mean, if he plays, he just he can just make money streaming Warzone and putting up YouTube videos. If he doesn't play, same thing. Like, <laughs> I don't think it, his life's not affected either way. If he wants to try to play to be a like a competitor again, that's good for him. Go for it. He can. Yeah, dude. That's. I mean, he's he's good financially. He's stable. He can do whatever he wants, and he loves COD. So why would he leave? He's doing well. Um. And I also think part of the trying to become a like a starter pro again is like part of his brand. And he's not gonna let that go anytime soon. Uh keep Dom or place with CTF. Fuck CTF. Uh another uh, hard point would be cool. But uh, I like Dom. The hard points like in this game aren't good enough for it, and there's not enough of them. I think they should just keep Dom. Yeah, I like Dom. CTF personally. is horrible, dude. CTF on like so imagine like CTF on like St. Petrograd, <laughs> like five five. I'd, I'd be up. Terrible. I'd be up two flags and I'd be in a corner in a restaurant. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'd just be holding you in, in the corner. Yeah, and if 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 the reason you're removing be Dom is because it's not entertaining to watch, holy sh! CTF on this game would be atrocious. I'd be on highway heady with M4. Like, what are you gonna do? Is COD better for you? There needs five. to be streaks with CTF. Like, sorry, the CTF. There needs to be like streaks in CTF or something. Well, that's if if the game is built for CTF and it's a good CTF game, which there's yeah. been like one of in COD, which I would say is like MW3, which is a really good CTF game. Black Ops 2 is good for CTF. Yeah. No, it was, but there were still streaks. I don't. That game wasn't. I built like for CTF. I like streaks in CTF. So do I. It's good for stopping the oh, flag okay. and like making plays and stuff like oh, that. I thought you were saying you dislike like streaks. No, that's like the only way you can have, in my opinion, CTF and COD without streaks. Yeah. Tweezy, Tweezy makes stuff happen. And even then, if you take the old CTFs from old CODs and like played it today, it would not be fun. Because, <laughs> yeah, people have gotten better. <laughs> I used to be able to kill people on high rise off the barrels. I'm not killing simp on the barrels anymore. You know, like that spot is OP. Um, and 5v5 is yeah, different. Why do you think Haggy doesn't deserve to be in the league? I mean, one, like, I just think the quality of players in the league is like pretty good right now. And also, team dynamic, like, you have to have people who would want to play with him. And that's, I think that's cool. the most important thing. Yeah. He's burned a lot of bridges with like, with a lot of the current pros. And it's not like he's like better than. <laughs> He's not like he's better than these people on these teams. He's not, and it has <laughs> has no, and he just brings a lot of baggage with him outside of the game. Why does Ant yeah. sound sad? Well, I did wake up really early today. <laughs> um, I've been on an early grind. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit tired. I probably sound like that all episode, honestly. But the content's been good, so you guys can't complain. Unless for Karma trade, I first of all, these trades are really hard to pull off, and I'm sure Seattle would jump on that trade if they could, but. There's no way that's being offered to them. You guys, these trades are really hard to pull off in franchising. And you got to understand, like, team people are trying to make it, like, they're not, they're not trying to make fair trades. They're trying to win trades. What other offers did you get? Uh, I had a couple um, teams interested in me being their general manager. I actually didn't have any coaching offers, but I never really made that known. I didn't really want to be a coach. It's kind of, unless the, like, price is right, but it's kind of like, Getting on and like watch scrims all day is kind of tough. And then what like what happened to John? Like this could, that can happen. I'd rather like make a team and like be a part of that process. Um, players currently not on a team that you think will make immediate impact on some of these almost their teams. Hmm. What's the question? What players that are currently not on a team that you think will make an immediate impact on some of these almost their teams? Uh, I not on a team like in the league at all. I don't even think there are any of those players, to be honest. Yeah, not on, you'd have to go to like a top AM team type of person. So try to get someone that's similar to Mac. But like make an immediate impact is like I just I don't know. I mean, we've seen fellow play before. He's good, but he's not gonna make an immediate impact. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'd have to be like somebody like Siblings or Awakening or. 
Yeah, Saints is good, man. He's on a team now. He's, He's on a team. Yeah. Like, even if you were to say, if someone said Brack, like, uh, how do you say his name like that? Brack. That's how I always say Brack because it's a heavy Brack. Name, Brack. Brack. <laughs> how do you say like Brack? You can't say Brack. 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 <laughs> <laughs> is that his uh, real name or is his name Brock? Because if his name's Brock, that's horrible. His name is, is Carson. Okay. <laughs> say you're a GM what would your team be I just get to pick five players <laughs> yeah you agree you with me kidding? on the loony optic take the loony on optic would be different dude different uh, if I could just name five players to put on the team Flasher Kenny Simp Abizi Celium <laughs> get it cracking clown. oh the <laughs> weekly clown I'm gonna let John pick this weekly clown I know who oh, I have no idea what? <laughs> I'm not picking any weekly clown. I know what you're trying to get me to do. There ain't no way. You have to pick a weekly clown. Why do I have to pick a weekly clown? I'm not picking a weekly clown. Because <laughs> I picked it last week, so it's on you this week. You Every, what? It. You have to pick it this time. It's on you. you, have to mm, pick you have to ooh, pick yeah, I like that. TJ Haley. You fucking idiot. <laughs> Stay <Yeah>. down. <laughs> nah, I mean, I, I have no idea. Okay. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing that. All right. So I don't. Why are people saying Mud Dog? I don't even feel like he has the power to even make these. It's not like I don't even think he has the power to make these decisions. He's a fucking yeah, voice. He's not. He's not the weekly clown. Not the weekly clown at all. Somebody put the clown emoji. <laughs> 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 and that, you know, I think that's gonna wrap it up, guys. Uh, this was a good episode. Did you guys enjoy it? A hey, type of one in the chat if you guys enjoyed the episode. And then uh, also, everybody in the chat, press F to pay respects for John because he got fired. <laughs> I'm you, a homeless. You guys continuously showing up every week is keeping John uh, having food on the table. <laughs> it doesn't go unnoticed. We appreciate you guys very much. Um, and while you guys spam F in the chat, I'd also appreciate it if you guys convince John to play Warzone with me at some point. And turn the stream on. John, Turn the, you want to turn the stream on and play Warzone? I'll no. turn mine off and host you. No. Why not? No. I've yet to play a single game of Warzone, guys. That's I'm not the perfect I, time. Not one game. Not one game That's of Warzone. Perf- Dude, but chat, is that not perfect? It's time <laughs> for the Pac-Man content creation train. Look. Yeah, who would win in the gulag between me and you in, like, real life? In real life? Dude, I'm fucking you up, bro. I have you the size, a, the speed. Give me a Magnum in real life. I mean, I'm literally. Well, one, slide. just looking at you, you're probably holding it sideways. Second of all, I. What? The, okay, <laughs> guys. All right. I have the size. The Podcast speed, 29. I have the size, the speed, the marksmanship. Like, it's just all there. Oh, whoa. Anywho. <laughs> Wait. Why is the chat saying racist? I was just saying that he doesn't know how to wield a weapon. He's only played virtual games his whole life. Oh, my God. Chat is so toxic. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to play some more zones. If you guys want to keep rocking with me, I'm going to stay on right now. I'm going to switch over everything. John, you trying to cool it? No, bro. No. I'm not playing fucking war zone. I really appreciate it. You guys are great. Hopefully I bounce back soon. You'll see me. Are they?